as I was thinking about the, the message for today, the thought came to mind in his name. What? So you would. I, I love this photo. Uh, you see this little girl that she's looking at. It, I'm assuming that's a, a smartphone, I guess. And uh, in his name, what? Today, I believe the Lord give, gave me this message to encourage you as his children to understand that in the name of Jesus Christ, anything's possible. But the greatest thing that's available in the name of Jesus Christ, which I will bring in the message in just a little bit, is salvation. There, there, there's something special about this one named Jesus Christ. And, and as, our, as our main scripture text this morning, I'm going to look at Mark chapter 16, verses 15 through 18. Now, there are, depending on what versions of the Bible you get or who you talk to in biblical scholars or whatever, they will tell you that the portion we're getting ready to read was, was not uh, originally in the original text or wasn't in this one here. Or there. Bottom line is, it's in there now. And, and, and what it says definitely it lines up with everything else that the Word teaches and proclaims and speaks of. So th this is Jesus himself talking to the different lead of the world. And this is almost like his great commission, the Matthew's great commission is what we know as go to into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, you know, teach them, disciple them, you know, along with you always to the, even to the end of the age. But this is the way Mark puts this commission of Jesus of speaking this. And it says, And then he told them, Go into all the world and preach the good news to everyone. So who are we to, who are we to declare this good news to? Everybody. Remember, we, we talked about it last week. We were dealing with our white elephant Christmas. I was talking about the gifts that God gives and how He offers us eternal life and how He offers us peace and all of these things and how His gifts are good and generous and, and perfect. And, and, the, and He does it all because of His love. But the greatest gift of all was what? His Son, Jesus Christ. And then, I, then we went in last week and said, what are we supposed to do with this gift? First off, we accept it for what? Ourselves, and then we share it with everybody we come in contact with. And this is what Christ is saying here. Preach this good news to everyone. Anyone who believes and is baptized will be saved. So he, he does, you know, he simply says, if you believe in him, you're saved. If you realize he's the Son of God and you believe in him, you are saved. But anyone who refuses to believe will be condemned. But then he continues, says, These miraculous signs will accompany those who believe. Now, of course, in the King James or the New King James, it starts out with, in my name. And in this version, it doesn't put that first. But it says, They will cast out demons in my name. And there's a reason why, if you notice, I had that color changed. I have a highlight. Because so I want you to understand that we're talking about in my name, in the name of who? In the name of Jesus. It says, They will cast out demons in my name, and they will speak in new languages. In other words, not only will He give you the baptism of the Holy Ghost, which is that heavenly language that comes with the infilling of the Holy Spirit, but also He will change the way you usually talk. In other words, if you were a filthy mouth individual before, you should be a filthy mouth individual after you meet Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior. He will come in and literally change. He will give you the ability to change your life, and they will be able to... Now, again, I'm not recommending this to anybody, but I'll explain. There's some biblical things for this, okay? They will be able to handle snakes with safety, if they drink anything poisonous, it, it won't hurt them. They will be able to place their hands on the sick and they will be healed. Now, I am not telling you that for the scripture or the Bible is not telling you to go out and play with a cobra. Okay? And sit there saying, you know, I believe in Jesus. Come on, cobra, I'll smack you silly. And you get messed around with it, guess what? You're going to get dead. And if you do something foolish, expect something foolish to happen. Now, I said that to say this. Why is that in there is, a, there, there is an incident in the Bible where it talks about the Apostle Paul. He was, he was shipwrecked on an island. And as he was gathering <coughs> sticks for the fire, and he was placing sticks on there, a snake, a venomous snake, came out of the fire, bit him, and then he shook it off into the flames. And, of course, all of those on the island thought that maybe this man, he said, you know, he may have escaped the God of the sea, but the God of the land won't let him escape, so this God of the land is punishing him so he will die. And then we get a notice when he should have swollen up and now all these things being to happen should have happened to him. Nothing happened. He was completely and utterly fine. The snake became harmless to him. Now, that's what the Bible's talking about. If something unexpected comes against you, it, it, 
Through the power of God, it won't have any effect on you. But you want to go out there and play with a snake. Don't be surprised if you get bit and then you get sick. It has nothing to do with lack of faith or, or faith. A lot of times it has to do with common sense. I understand why you're going to get the poison saints. You've probably heard cases throughout even, even history and accounts where people have tried to, to poison godly men and women and they have no effect because why? The power of God has kept them safe. You go out and drink, drink some arsenic, odds are you're probably foaming at the mouth a little bit later on. Okay? So, the biggest thing, don't misinterpret the scriptures, and we want to stick with what, with what it's saying, but the whole thing is all this is available in the name of Jesus. All of this stuff that he's talking about, it's available in his name, not anybody's name. It's not available in the name of Muhammad. It's not available in the name of Confucius or any of these other things that are being worshipped. It's not available in Mother Nature. I'll tell you something that really gets under my eye. Since I just said Mother Nature. Since I just said Mother Nature. I, I get sick and tired. I, and, yep, see, as a Christian, if Jeff was here, he'd, I'd say the spirit of Jack slaps me to come off me when I hear this kind of stuff. When people attribute things to the earth deity, Mother Nature, the founder of this earth was our Heavenly Father. The creator of this earth is our Heavenly Father. He's the only God there is. He's the only God there ever will be. And when I hear people say, well, you know, if Mother Nature allows it, the Mother I know nature's there. He set the rules in place. But Mother Nature has nothing to do with it. They're all laws that he has set up, that he has ordained by his power, not some deity that they think is the spirit of this planet. It all belongs to him. So it's all in his name. His name. It's all in the name of Jesus. And that's why, as we get into this message, I've told you this before, and I'm going to tell you again today, people don't care if you talk about God. Because God could be anything to anybody. You can talk to them about God all you want. But when you begin to narrow it down, you'll say, the Lord God, Jehovah. Even then, they don't have too much of a problem with it because three religions can sort of come in with that. Because, you know, the Christian religion, we believe in the Lord God, Jehovah. The Judaism believes in the Lord God, Jehovah. And, and, and they say they do, but the Muslims believe in who they say the Lord God, Jehovah is. That, you know, that, that we all worship the same God. We just have different prophets. The Jews are still waiting for their prophet to come. The Christians, our prophet has come who we call Jesus Christ the Messiah. Uh, the, the Muslims, their one prophet has come, but they're still waiting for their Mahdi to come, which is their Messiah. Um, or the Christians are the one where we said our Messiah has arrived, and we can say he's Jesus Christ. And of course, we say that according to everything that we see that he has done through his life and what the Bible brings out. We, we declare that Jesus is the Christ. But people don't care if you talk about God. They get upset when you get to mention either, like I said, Jehovah, because that narrows it down a little bit, but they even get really upset when you talk about a five-letter name, and that name is Jesus. Because all of a sudden that begins to, that, that shows everything else, that, that narrows it down to, 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 to a very fine point, and, and it's the name of Jesus. It's the name, and when I'm saying in my name, we need to say it's in the name of Jesus. All these things are possible. It's in the name of Jesus. Why you have salvation today? If you have the hope of eternal life, it's because of Jesus. It's not because of anything else. It's because of Jesus. So it's in the name of Jesus. All of these things are possible. So I want to look at a couple of things that that happened as a result of the early church declaring the name of Jesus. And not only is it available to the early church, but this first, this first portion of Scripture we're going to read will, will tell you it's available to all those who believe. In Acts chapter 2, verses 37 through 39, it says, Peter, he just finishes speaking a message to a crowd that has gathered because of uh, the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. And it says, And Peter's words pierced their hearts, and they said to him and to the other apostles, Brother, what should we do? They didn't even... They just knew there was something wrong in their life. When they got around these individuals and they truly began to declare the glory of the Lord, the workings of the Lord, the miracles of the Lord, and who Jesus Christ is, these people, they didn't know what to do. They said, what should we do? And Peter replied, each of you must repent of your sins, turn to God, and be baptized in the name of who? In the name of Jesus Christ to show that you have received forgiveness for your sins. 
Then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This promise is to you, to your children, even to the Gentiles, all who have called on the name of all who are called by the name, all by the Lord our God. Sorry, I, now I'm used to doing things in King James because that's what, that's what I read for so long. So when I read certain portions of Scripture, it begins to bring that to my mind, and I don't even read what's down there half the time. I begin to put it in King James. But all have been called by the Lord our God. So and then it says, as many that are afar off. So all of this is available in the name of Jesus Christ. When, when, when all this stuff is happening, people say, you know, why is this happening? When they begin to see the blessings of God in your life, you need to begin to tell them this is happening because of, not because you're just only you're a Christian, but because of Jesus. It's that name. It's that individual that has the power to change lives. It's in Him. In His name. What? In Him. In Him. There's power for change. There, there's a difference that is there because it is Jesus Christ we're talking about. He truly is the Son of God. He's the only Son of God. He's not one of the sons. He's the only. He's the one and only Son of God. Romans 10, 13 says, For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. So again, anybody, it doesn't matter who you are. And sometimes as humans, that's hard for us to understand. I don't care how vile of a person you are. If you truly ask the Lord to forgive your sins, you're forgiven. That doesn't mean you keep on doing what you were doing, because if that's the case, I truly, as far as I'm concerned, you weren't forgiven. Nothing happened. There is a noticeable change. That is a promise that, that he makes. Because if you read, if you go back to what we initially opened up with, he says, anyone who accepts this, he says, these signs shall follow them. He's talking about others, there'll be a change in your life. God even talks about it. He says, I will take away your heart of stone. In other words, it won't be a little checklist like the Ten Commandment columns, but I'll write upon a heart of flesh my law. Which means what? It literally becomes a part of who we are. You know, it, God just begins to change you. Jesus, and what He did on the cross, and, and the blood that He shed on Calvary, and the power of His resurrection, begins to literally change who you are. That's why it says that anyone who is in Christ, who is, anyone who is in Christ Jesus, He is a new creation. It is a miracle act of God. It's a creative act of God when we receive Christ into our hearts and our lives. But this is available to everyone this promises to you and your children and even to the Gentiles guess what that includes us because how many in here are Jews this morning how many who all knew he was talking to in here he's talking to Jews the first the early church was Jews they you know they were Jews it was comprised of Jews and God through his his great grace allowed us Gentiles to become a part of this and Peter declared that on this day of Pentecost But it doesn't stop there. So all of us, we see, they're asking what needs to be done. They're finding it's all in the name of Jesus. But let's see what the early church did in the name of Jesus Christ. Acts chapter 3, verses 1 through 10, tells the story. Um, I, I, won't, I won't read it. I'll just go ahead and just tell it to you. It tells the story how uh, Peter and John were walking into the, the temple one day on the hour of prayer. And as they were approaching, there was a man sitting there at, at the temple gate. And every day he sat there to ask for people to give him some money, because that was the only way he could make a living. And Peter looked at him and said, you know, look, look at us. You know, take a look at us. And all of a sudden, this guy began to look at him, and he thought that they were going to give him some money. And Peter simply told him, he said, silver and gold, I don't have. He said, oh, I don't have any money to give you. He says, but I do have something to give you. We just said, he, he understood he had something to give him that was better than money. Because people could, dark people could come up to him and give him money, but the problem was, because he was a beggar, there was nothing. He had to rely on the generosity of those who were coming by because there, there was no way he could make a living except by begging. But Peter realized that there was something greater he needed. There was something more he could do for him. He says, you know, silver and gold, I, I can't give you. I can't give you any money, but what I do have, I will give you. In the name of Jesus Christ. See, again, in his name, what? He says, in the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. And he says, he reached out, grabbed him by the hand, and lifted him up. And it says, immediately... His ankles received strength, and the man began to not only stand up, but he began to run and leap and praise God in the temple. He was, he was following Peter and John as they continued to go on into the temple, and immediately this happened, and it all happened because of the name of Jesus Christ. We need to understand and we need to realize who we serve this morning, who we believe in. Like That's why I said, when he came down to my father, this thing, I'm telling you, I thought for sure after Wednesday he was going to die pretty soon. 
I just, I've seen the looks of death on people's faces before, and that's literally what I saw. But, and, and, and I said, God, the bottom line is, whatever you decide to do, I'm okay with. Because my dad, my dad's been serving the Lord for, I don't know, since he was in his early 20s. No one ever told him about the Lord when he was a, when he was a kid. He, he, was in, he was in basic training and getting ready to be shipped out to, to Europe in World War II. And while he was crossing across this, this army camp, this, this army camp, the Lord audibly spoke to him and said, Granville, if you were to die on the battlefield, you're not ready to meet me. He says, you need to know who I am. And it just so happened that that particular Sunday that the chaplain was, was, was a chaplain who actually gave an altar call, preached the salvation message, gave an altar call. My dad gave his heart and life to the Lord that Sunday and has been serving him ever since. And God kept him through World War II and God has done many great things throughout his life and through his ministry. So the bottom line is, I can't be upset if God takes him. Do I want him around a little bit longer? Yes, I do. But I want him around as how he was, not how I see him right now. So no matter what, God is, is good. And, it, and it, it was the name of Jesus that changed his life. It's the name of Jesus that will do this. If anything can raise my dad up out of that bed and make him strong, make him well, it's Jesus Christ. It's not the doctors. I'm thankful for the doctors. I'm grateful for the doctors. But his life is in the hands of the Almighty God. Yeah. His, his life is in the hands of my, my Lord and my Savior. And I know that's the best place they can be. And whatever God decides to do is the best thing. And that's a determination. I realize it's a determination that, that I've come to, and I'm going to grab a hold of that no matter what, whatever God decides to do, it's the correct thing. And it is the best thing, because I know God has my best interest at heart. He has the best heart of my, of my family, in their interest at heart. He has the best interest of my dad at heart. So, so as far as that, I don't worry about that kind of thing. The biggest thing is I just don't want him to suffer. All right. So I, but again, I just leave all that decision making to God. And I talk to God and I tell him my case and how I would like it to be. But that's up to him. He's God. And I, I, again, I would, everything he decides to do, that's okay with him. But here's this guy. Peter knew that, hey, I can give him something that this world can't give him. Through the power of Jesus Christ, he can get a strength. And not only now with this man running and leaving praising God, he now will have the ability to do what? He can actually still have to pay anymore. He can go out and begin to make a living for himself and begin to build a family, support a family. All this have not relied on this. And all this was available in the name of Jesus. All in the name of Jesus, this is available. See, the same thing that happened there, it's available to us as believers of God today. See, we need to stop seeking the manifestations and all this stuff and just seek Him and these things will happen. See, Peter and John weren't going to say, well, Lord, who can we heal today? They were going to worship the Lord. And on their way there, a situation arrives that allowed them to declare the name of the Lord. You see the difference? Then in Acts chapter 16, verses 24 through 34, there's an account there about a guy named Paul. And his, his companion called Silas. They were in a town at, in, in Philippi. And while they were there, they, again, they were going around declaring the word of the Lord. That they, 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 were, they were declaring how great God is. And, and, and while they were doing it, there was this one girl there. She was, I guess you could say she was a fortune teller. We've got about the best way to describe what she is. And she went around because, and began to declare, these men are the men who are declaring a, the word about the most high God. You know, she's trying to give testimony to them. They're saying, yeah, you know, you know, can I get a witness? You know, that kind of thing. So she was sort of like uh, an unholy witness. And Paul got sick of this. He realized, you know, I don't need the, the, this heathen, this demon-possessed woman sitting there saying that, that, that God is doing this. He says, I know it's God. And the miracle speaks of them himself. So he just turned around and says, spirit of And it was gone. It was gone. Now, there's only a slight problem. This woman made a lot of money for the people because she was sort of like a slave. She made a lot of money for the people who owned her or had control over her. And they got upset. So they, they grabbed Paul and Silas and had them brought into court and said, these men who are Jews are bringing a doctrine that's contrary to what we believe here. And they need to be punished. So long story short, sure they get beaten. That they're all beat up. Did they hand them over to the jail and throw them in jail? I mean, all this were just declaring the name of Jesus Christ and relieving somebody from a demon-possessed spirit. They throw them in jail. But Paul and Silas went in there. The Bible says that as midnight begins to approach, they're not in there going, why did this happen to me? Because I will tell you, many times as Christians, what do we do? When something goes wrong, what do we get to do? What did I do to deserve this? We get on a pity party. 
we begin to sit there and, and say, God, don't love you like me anymore. I mean, let's be real. Let's be real. Paul and Sasha were doing what they were supposed to be doing. And opposition came because of that, and hurt became because of that. They were physically hurt, and they were thrown into prison. But they weren't sitting there saying, oh me, oh my. It says at the midnight hour, they begin to sing what? Songs of praise to the Lord. They begin to worship and pray. I, I mean, I guess I could hear him now saying, Lord, you are awesome and great. Father, you delivered me from such a life of sin. I was doing this, everything contrary to you, but you came to me and with such great power and showed me the way to you. And they just began to declare the goodness of the Lord. They said, Lord, we saw what you did here in this town when we went there and preached and all the healings you did, Lord. We're declaring that you're great and awesome. We love you, Lord God. And as they begin to sing these songs out of praise, they make these declarations of praise. The Bible says that all of a sudden, the, 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 the prison just began to shake. Not only did it shake, the doors flung open. Not only did the doors fling open, but the chains that were holding them fell off. In fact, not only off of them, but off of everybody in this prison. They were free. The doors were open. They could walk out. The jailer walks up, wakes up, and he sees all the doors open. And he's, he's certain that Everyone has left, and he pulls his own sword, and he's getting ready to kill himself. And Paul hollers out, says, don't harm yourself. Everyone is still here. Now, I sort of understand that statement. Now, think about this. If you knew you were a criminal in a prison, you hear these guys singing songs to some guys you may not know about, and this happens. The doors open, the chains fall off. If you don't know this guy, are you going to be brave enough to walk out that door? I wouldn't be. So I understand why they didn't leave the prison. <laughs> and of course, this man comes. He says, you know, what, what must I do to be saved? You know, what is this? And he says, you know, Pete Paul says, don't hurt yourself. Everybody's still here. And I guess, the, apparently, the, 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 this jailer, he heard a little bit about this, this guy named Paul and Saul, what they were declaring. Because he said, sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they replied, believe in, in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved along with everyone in your household. And they shared the word of the Lord with him, and all who lived in his household, even at that hour of the night, the jailer cared for them and washed their wounds. And then, and then he, then he <coughs> and those in his household were immediately baptized, and he brought them into his house and set a meal before them, and he and his entire household rejoiced because they all believed in God. But he, because Peter... Because Paul and Silas would not allow the situation to get the best of them. Not only were they delivered from prison, but they were able to share the gospel message with the jailer and his family, save his life, but ultimately really save his life by telling them about Jesus. And all this happened because of why? Because of the name of Jesus. So I'm here to tell you this morning. I believe God wants me to tell you this morning. It doesn't matter the situations going on in your life. Your answer is found where? in Jesus. It's found in Him. And I know sometimes we, 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 as a church, sometimes we make it so, you know, we see what we make it so trivial. We, we just let it roll off our tongue so easy, you know. Well, I'll pray for you. The, the Lord knows all about it, but the, honestly, that's true. The Lord does know all about it. And if we truly pray, we pray in a prayer of faith and a prayer of agreement, God can truly move because that is what He has always done and that is what He still desires to do. And it's all available, and it's only available in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm going to ask our musicians to come up and just play softly in the background. I just have a couple of questions for you, but I just want to end with in closing. This is what can happen for those who truly just get their hearts and lives rooted ground and focus on Jesus Christ. Now, I will tell you, for everyone we talked about here, there was a price to be paid for them to have happen in their lives what happened in their lives. There, you know, it was not an easy road. In other words, um, these things didn't come to them very easily. And if you talk to true any men and women, true men and women of God, the power of God that was available in their lives was not an easy road. To get to. 
other words, it wasn't with a lady down, lady down a sick prayer every night that they prayed. It wasn't just with picking up the Bible every once in a while and reading a verse. But it was with those who truly got serious with God. Now again, I'm not telling you God won't answer your prayer if it's not the way. I'm just saying, but these individuals here, you, these ones where you truly see miraculous things happen in their lives, it's because they got down to business with God. And if we would truly as a church get down to business with God, God only knows, and I'm, just, I'm not saying it as a cliche, I'm saying it as an actual statement. God only knows what will happen if truly we get our hearts and our lives committed to Him. Truly seek His face. Begin to not let the, the, the junk of this world weigh us down. Not begin to let it hinder us or whatever. But truly just begin to seek His face. As we talked about over the past several months, pursuing Him wholeheartedly. Then God can awaken and do things in our lives like never before. Because this is what I want you to understand about this name of Jesus Christ. I read this over the service this morning, Philippians chapter 2, verses 9 through 11. Therefore, God, God elevated him to a place of highest honor and gave him the name above all other names, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. Now we know that's referring to that one day you're going to declare He's Lord no matter what. But also the point I want you to understand is that it says that God has elevated Him to a place of highest honor. There's no higher place than what Jesus has been elevated to. And because of this, it gave Him a name which is above every name. It's above all names. Because Jesus himself even declared, he says, anything you ask in my name, I will do it that the Father may receive the glory. So it's all available in the name of Jesus Christ. It's in that name. And we need to, we need to make sure when we talk to people, we're talking about Jesus. We're mentioning his name because it is that name that has the power to change. It is that name that gave his life to, to ransom a world who is bound by sin. It is that name that sets the captive free. It is that name that brings healing to the sick. It is that name that brings freedom to those who are addicts. It is that name and that name beloved. Second Corinthians chapter 1 verse 20 says, For all the promises of God in Him and who in Jesus are yes and in Him Amen, which means so be it. It's surely going to happen. It's an affirmative to the glory of God through us. But all of the promises of God in Him are yes. It's in that name of Jesus. And see, we need to make sure we keep our focus in the right place. And that focus needs to be on Jesus Christ and on Him alone. It's all in that name. The last portion of scripture I'm reaching this morning isn't in the New Testament, it's in the Old. Because there's a question I'm going to pose to you this morning that are here. It's found in 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 21. And it says this, it says, Then Elijah stood in front of them and said, How much longer will you waver, hobble between two opinions? If the Lord if the Lord is God, follow Him. But if Baal is God, then follow Him. But the people were completely silent. At this time, the Bible, Israel didn't really know who they believed. They were worshiping anything and everything. And God finally sends His prophet named Elijah to them and called them up to prove who was God. And on this mountaintop, God literally, after this whole scenario goes, God sends fire down from heaven, consumes the sacrifice, well, consumes the sacrifice, but, 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 but he, the fire consumes the stone, the wood, and also they poured all this water on, which filled it up drown, and, 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 and just made it completely wet, and he, and he sucked up all the water with this fire. And this is the statement that Elijah makes next. He says, don't, don't sit there and stumble between two opinions. If the Lord is God, follow Him. If Baal is God, follow Him. 
But I think what amazes me the most about this entire thing is what it says at the very end of that verse. The people stood there completely silent. This morning I'm declaring to you what is possible in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm telling you, if you grab the hold of him with everything that's in you, if Jesus Christ truly is the Messiah, if he truly is the Savior, if he truly is the Lord that the Bible says he is, then I'm telling you, if he's Lord, then follow him. If not, if you think something else is, then follow him. Don't be different between two opinions. If you say Jesus Christ is Lord, go after him with everything that is in you. Don't remain there silent. Don't remain there straddling the fence. Choose one way or another what you're going to do. But one way will be the best decision you ever made. The other way will be the worst decision you ever made. But the bottom line is it's your decision. As you've heard me say this before, if you try to straddle the fence, we know what happens with that. What happens if you straddle the fence and all of a sudden your legs come apart? You're in a whole lot of hurt. It's not going to feel good. The same thing with this. You have to choose one side or the other. There is no middle ground. There is no gray shaded area. It's either Jesus or something else. But if you truly say you believe in Jesus, I would encourage you this morning, as we end this year and as we get to go into the next year, follow him and pursue him with everything that's in you. Because in his name, great and mighty things are possible. In his name, great and mighty things will be done. But it's in his name and in his name alone. And believing in that one and grabbing a hold of him. And let him just let God do in your life what he wants to do. That's what I believe he came by just to have me share with you this morning. Is that it's all available. But the question is, what will your answer be? What will your choice be? Are you going to truly pursue the Lord? Are you going to pursue Jesus Christ? Or are you going to keep on floundering around the way you're floundering around? There's no middle ground. It's either Him and everything. It's Him and everything. Or it's none of Him at all and nothing. He won't take a little part of your heart. He wants it all. He wants everything you have. He wants all of you. He won't be satisfied with anything else but that. Will you stand with me this morning? Like I said, this is what's available to those who believe. How much are you going to try to pursue him? Like I said, this didn't happen to just Nancy Pammy Christians. This happened to men and women of God. So you understand that there's a difference what I mean by that. And my question is, do you want to be a real man and woman of God? Or you just want to be something that just clowns and flops around over there? Just getting enough of the Lord to make your life miserable. Did you hear me? Just get enough of the Lord to make your life miserable. See, a lot of times, you know, many times we mess with God, but first of all, we don't want to go to hell, so, so we try to do the church thing and try to do this. This What I'm talking about is a life of, of reckless abandon to Him. It's a life that's lived wholly, completely to Him because if you try to do it any other way, it's a life of misery. The only way is truly a life of joy and peace and goodness is a life that's fully pursued after Him. question is, which one are you going to choose this morning? Which life do you want? Do you want him to show up like he's never shown up before? If you do, then it's a life of wholehearted pursuit. If you don't, just keep on, well, maybe just keep on doing what you're doing. And you can keep on getting the same old results. You've all heard this, right? What is the definition of insanity? Have you ever heard what the definition of insanity is? To do the same thing, what? Over and over again. And expecting different. different results. That doesn't happen, does it? Because if you do the same thing over and over again, what happens? The same thing. Because you're doing the same thing. So that, you know, if you expect a different thing, it won't happen. So 
So do you want him or not? And if you want to say, Lord, I'm going to end this year, make the declaration, I'm going to pursue you, I'm pressing to do it, and not only for the last of the two days of this year, and, I, and you may have been pursuing him this year this way. So, again, you just have to say, this is what I've been doing, I'm committed, I'm going to do this again, I just want to continue to do. And you would say, I'm going to, I'm going to commit that even when 2013 rolls around, I'm about to say 2012, when 2013 rolls around, I'm going to continue this thing, and I'm going to make sure that's even the greatest year I've ever had in you, because I'm pursuing you, I'm going to continue, continue to pursue you with everything that is in me. Because, Lord, I know Jesus truly is the only answer. And he's the answer that I need. And I'm going to pursue him with everything that's in me. If that's you this morning, all, all I'm doing by asking you to come to the altar is just an act of agreement. You're saying, Pastor, I agree with what you're saying this morning. I'm agreeing with what the Word of God declared. And I'm saying, I'm going to pursue him with everything that's in me. Because I want to, I'm declaring that the Lord is God. The Lord is God. Jesus, he is my Savior. He's my hope. He's my deliverer. Anything and everything I need, I know is found in Him. And I'm making a declaration. I want the devil to know I believe that and I'm going to live that. Not only have I lived it this year, but I'm declaring I'm going to live it next year. I'm going after Him with everything that is in me. And if that's you this morning, you slip out from where you're at, just come up to the Lord. Here's my life. I've given it to you. Fresh in you. I've given you my heart. I've given you my soul. Everything that is in me. And maybe you might be straddled with the fence. And if that's the case, come to the Lord. I don't want to straddle the fence any longer. I don't want to play church as usual any longer. I want to declare afresh and anew that Jesus Christ is Lord. And then as the pastor declared this word this morning, I want signs and wonders as Jesus said in his name. I want these things to be declared in my life. Not that I'm anything, but that it brings honor and glory and praise to you. Amen? Amen? Go to your and say, Lord, here's my life. I give it to you, fresh in and Lord, I'm declaring that I, I'm just going to pursue you with everything that is in me. Here's my heart, my life. Lord, I want, I'm declaring that the Lord is God, that Jesus Christ is my Savior. Lord, we just praise you and worship in this place this morning. We love you, Lord. We thank you for this opportunity to be here today. We thank you for this chance to be able to make this, this affirmation that we believe in you, Lord Jesus Christ. That we declare that you are the Lord. There is no one else but you. That in your name, all things are possible. In your name, there is salvation, which is the greatest miracle of all. But Lord, not only that, you didn't stop there. You, you allowed us to be able to have healing available in your name. You allowed freedom to come in your name. You allowed prosperity. 